There was a time, Al Shattuck. There was a time. Yes. That when Donald Trump could do everything broke for Trump in 2016, and even somewhat into his presidency. Mm-hmm. But it was certainly during the campaign, everything broke for Trump. Everything worked for him. When there, when he needed there to be a terrorist attack, there was a terrorist attack. When the border needed to be a mess, there needed, the border was a mess. Like he was, t- Trump won every hand. Right. And that is the zone that Tucker Carlson is in now. He can't. Uh, this is like the perfect situation for him, where th- they internally, Fox News, we assume it's Fox, is leaking more stuff on Tucker. Um, and uh, trying to destroy his career. Or as Media Matter calls it, creepy videos. Right. And in fact, these videos show that... They're very creepy. This guy this guy <laughs> knew that he was going to blow the bridge. He knew that he was going to... It reminds me of Andy Dufresne at the end of Shawshank Redemption. You know, he had been planning for the day he got let go. And what they think are secret captured videos that, that are embarrassing or career damaging are wonderful. They showcase that this guy knows what's going on. They showcase that... He's funny. He's a good hang. He's relaxed. Like, there's nothing bad about him. You're absolutely right. And uh, it's it's just remarkable. When I saw these, I thought, okay, that's it. That's it. Him and his buddy are going to get busted. You know, goodness knows what what they were doing. But, so, here is some of the Tucker Carlson stuff. This is you. You heard we played the complaint yesterday, right? Did we not play anything? Played the yesterday? complaint yesterday. The Tucker complaint about how. Oh yes, yes, yes. We did about how nobody likes to use Fox Nation because the website's sucks. terrible, and he's creating great content, and nobody's watching it because the website sucks, and he'd rather just throw it up on YouTube. Yes. So here's yes, which is a totally legitimate and rational thing to complain about. Yep, and so here's some more Tucker leaks. You wouldn't? Okay, I'm not. You know what? I'm not qualified on that score. I will say. I thought his girlfriend was kind of yummy. Just kidding. Just kidding. In case this is being pulled off the bird. Yeah, the bird. Hey, media matters for America. Go fuck yourself. That's the first thing I want to say tonight. Second thing is, totally kidding. I don't even know what his girlfriend looks like. And if I did, I would not find her yummy. <laughs> you wouldn't? Oh. <laughs> How great is that? Yeah, so of course he's referencing if Media Matters for America steals this off of the satellite, right. then, you know, screw it, it, you, it seems... and I obviously didn't mean it. Which it, is it, funny it... that they took that and ran with it. So, did you read any of the article, the Media Matters article? No. Because, um, written by Matthew Gertz, actually, not to be confused with Matt Gates. Matt Gertz is married to my high school acquaintance, Alyssa Rosenberg. Oh, and really? Writes for Media oh, isn't Matters. that nice? Yes, it is nice. You almost nice. did a show all about her. I know. Almost. I know. Almost did it. Um, but anyway, so he wrote this whole piece. This is like where it got released from. And it's all um, like this is where they describe it as like creepy videos yes. where Tucker Carlson is terrible. Yeah. And it's. It's like all stuff like this. And some of these I didn't see the actual videos, you know, out. So I don't know if they're out somewhere and I just haven't seen them yet or if they're like if they haven't released everything that they have yet. Um, But yeah, Tucker Carlson's creepy behind the scene comments by Matt Gertz. Recently dismissed ex-Fox News host Tucker Carlson told, told a colleague preparing to interview him. This is Piers Morgan. If we're going to talk about sex, I'd love to hit some of the fine points of technique in a new behind-the-scenes video obtained by Media Matters. The New York Times reported last Wednesday that due to Carlson's indiscretion, more evidence of embarrassing and inappropriate conduct could emerge, highlighting videos obtained by the paper in which Carlson discusses his postmenopausal fans and described a woman as yummy. Media Matters has also obtained those videos published below, which paint a picture of Carlson's behavior on Fox's set. Uh, blah, Here's blah, some blah. of that. Everyone in this company is thrilled that you're doing this. I've gotten more calls from people about it. Oh, that's great. Well, I've got to say, I, I, when I came to um, New York a couple of weeks ago, I couldn't believe how welcoming and friendly everybody was. It was fantastic. I loved it. Yeah, they, they really mean it from the owners on down. Yeah. Um, it's cool. It's cool to see it. I like that. It's it's a good, you know, people are nice in this company, I think. They've always been nice to me anyway. 
I completely agree. Everyone's been very, very friendly and very nice, and I really appreciate it. Uh, but thank you so much for coming on. It's, uh, it's yeah, I bet that doesn't change. Of course. Yeah. It's just great to of have course. you on my show. I mean, I've been on yours enough times. It's great. I think it's totally cool. So let's, um, is, if we're going to talk about sex, I'd love to hit some of the fine points of technique. <laughs> But, you know, but it's your show. It's totally up to you. We can certainly talk about your sexual technique, especially after your tanning testicles last week. <laughs> Not mine. I, we'll, <laughs> we'll speak in more general terms, but I've got something to add. That's like referencing his Manosphere video about men's health that he did for... Uh, Tucker Carlson. Oh, right, 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 right. In a second video, Carlson on the set of his uh, Tucker Carlson Today streaming show tells someone off camera, I can never assess my appearance. I wait for my postmenopausal fans to weigh in on that. <laughs> he is apparently about to record as a staffer is fixing his hair. As he puts on his earpiece, he quips, What, they want to control me from afar? Okay, I'm putting the leash on. Apparently responding to something he hears, and that's when he says the F it will do it live. That's oh, the, that's that one? Yeah, so apparently that's cut from that video. But yeah, um, and Media Matters talks about how they had published him yesterday criticizing the um, criticizing the Fox Nation streaming service that is available. Let me see so. if I can find the rest of these. Um, so yeah, so and and it also mentions that I guess in that video, the um, Fox Nation one, he it shows Carlson prepping for an interview in which he said he would be speaking to an exile in Romania and welcoming him back into the Brotherhood of Journalists. An apparent reference that to his that August yesterday. 2022 sit down with arch misogynist Andrew Tate. I just thought that was funny how they framed that interview with arch misogynist Andrew Tate. Well, I feel great. You know, I can never I can never assess my appearance. I wait for my postmenopausal fans to weigh in on that. My I have beef. What? They want to control me from afar? Okay, I'm putting the leash on. You, you can. <laughs> Fuck it, we'll do it live. He's just a guy having a good time on the um, set of his TV show. I don't yeah. understand how these videos are in any way, shape, or form creepy. And so the that's framing the IFB of them is, is, like... is, is how he hears New York. Okay. So they so they're giving it because he's up in Maine here, and so he, mm -hmm. that's his earpiece. So um, so they can talk to him during the interviews and give him information. It's uh, I I have no problem with anything. They, they, they make them look absolutely great. This is what they <laughs> stuff, this is what they have. It is funny because if this is what they're leaking to media matters, it's like what I, the negotiations must not be going very well. I wouldn't think in terms of his exit deal that they're working on. No. No. What are they getting? Yeah, it's like, this is this is where we're at as you're releasing videos of him. I mean, like, do they think that's going to ruin him with his fans that he called people postmenopausal? Um, no. There's not th th How does that hurt? I guess I could say he's like insulting his audience, calling them old. They are. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's Fox News. They are old. Uh he probably has the youngest audience on Fox News. In other news, did you did I send you the Gutfeld clip? Uh, let me see. From the I have five. Been on the I don't road. remember, oh, but oh, anyway, he hold was. Hold on, before we gotta take a what? quick stop what? first. Why? Before we get to the uh, oh oh, is this when he said tuckered out? No. Okay, and before we get there, I forgot to tell you the reason why I don't have these clips is because I was just at karate with mm -hmm. our son. A banner day at Five Dragons. Alice. Oh yeah. A banner day at Five Dragons. I want to I want to play something for you. Yeah, I should have started with this. I meant to. Mm -hmm. And I want you to describe what's going on here. That is the sound of something wonderful. I almost, I actually welled up and almost cried from p pure pleasure today. Um, that is the sound of the Anson's Karate class. Mm -hmm. Running in half of the class was running in a circle, the entire diameter of the, the dojo, dojo. Mm -hmm. and the rest of them were inside the, the circumference, circle. not the Cir diameter. Okay, circumference. The rest of them were inside mm -hmm. the circle doing mm -hmm. push ups for 30 seconds, 
and they switched off again and again and again. I love that. Oh, it was wonderful. It was just absolutely wonderful. Oh God, that was great. That was great, and and that was inaudible, I think, because the the kids were too jumpy, so they they brought the law in. That's great. And still a little dice plane. All right, Alice, great gut fill. Uh, I don't remember if I actually sent this to us or not. I know I sent it to my conservative ladies group chat. But anyway, um, Gutfeld was joking on the five today about the writer's strike. Okay. Um, that they don't have any content anymore because the writer's strike. Um, uh, so they were talking about Peter Ducey, actually, which we should also get to, the Ducey and KJP today. But... Um, you know, he was saying, like, well, we don't have anything because the writer's strike. Kidding around. But then it occurred to me, like, he's actually kind of in a great position because all the late night shows are all going to be doing reruns now because of this writer's strike. Yeah. And, like, his show's not written by writers. So, and it's on, like, at the same time as a lot of those, isn't it? Doesn't it overlap with, like, Kimmel and yes. Fallon and all that stuff? So, like, they're going to be doing all reruns. He He's going to have, like, one of the only interesting shows on at that time that's not, like, that's new content. That's great. I don't see a cut, though. Uh, yeah, I might not have I Sometimes I forget to send things to us. Um, um, it, that but, is great. It is, it is funny, though. It just tells you where we are. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. I think I got it. Okay, get, get <laughs> unaffected by the writer's strike. Things. Appreciate the question. Let me go back and reset. Instead, she just says, like, okay, I'm moving on, as if that's the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you didn't like the Ducinator title, did you? I do like it. Really? Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I like how you spelled it. I would have yeah. spelled it differently. Yeah, well, our writers are on strike, so that's, <laughs> uh, that's, that's a problem. <laughs> Uh, you know, Jessica, you can't invite somebody to a party it, and then claim it's racism funny because when it, they it's show because up. Because it is, like, he is an original. And they do all their, I don't think anybody writes material for them on any of these shows, do they? Don't they do all their own stuff? I guess you're right. So the Tonight Show, The Late Show, and Jimmy Kimmel, I, I guess they're, so. They're just using producers. And, well, and there are comedians there, and he's kind of a comedian. But yeah. he's, a, he's a creative guy anyway. That is hilarious. That is absolutely hilarious. Now, what makes this different from about 1987, mm -hmm. there was a writer's strike in the 80s as well. There was one in like the 2000s that I recall. And, oh, I'm sure. And It ruined some good TV shows like but, Heroes. But it also made, in the 80s, it made Letterman funny. Because his show was anti-convention anyway. Mm -hmm. Breaking all the rules, slapping the camera around. You know, if, in, you know he was doing, purposefully shaking up convention anyway. Hmm. And a writer's strike became a f part of the show like you do his top 10 list and they'll say number seven not available to do the writer's strike and but it was just it was such a good time for the letterman the, the writer's strike I mean, if you guys remember that you you know it was hmm. but he was but that was david letterman with a big brain this is not happening now oh yeah colbert yeah. is not writing his own show no but except he's also, the parts where he like cries because he also he's... can't think in his feet he's just not he's not he's not a funny person like letterman there's right letterman's unique so anyway, so writer's strike, yeah, Hollywood's out of their minds. I was looking at um, all the outfits from Carl Lagerfeld, uh, Met Gala. Well, you know, because you brought that up today, mm -hmm. Todd Feinberg started to say, "Oh, they were talking about the the Oscar of uh, the Met Gala, and this guy who was who had been very rude." And I had all the information there because my darling wife educated me filled you in on you look very good alice this is Thanks, another va va boom night i uh, objectified you last night and i won't do it again thank you but I if uh, but i want to thanks i appreciate that i appreciate both i appreciate that you want to and that you have enough respect for me not to that's, yes that's so nice of you thank you love it thank you i'm glad i get points <laughs> um so yeah so i mean we probably should do Ducey now because he did corinne jean pierre yesterday told him that uh illegal migration was down 90 percent so he uh brought that up again to her today because it is as it turns out not down 90 yes. percent as i think we yes. all are it's aware it's so good that we're sending the united states army down there that's 1500 right. more people for the surge of down 90 percent just give me a second here to um, get this oh, you've but yeah so like i say mayorkas was bragging about what a great job they're doing you did the send us gutfeld but i was in karate when that was happening God, you sent us a lot of stuff. I know. I told you, I have a lot to talk about today. I don't You're even know how we're going to get to everything today. Part of every day. Today. Wow, we got to rock. 
if the border is secure, as the administration has said, then why would we need to send 1,500 active duty U.S. troops down there? Because we need more work. We need more work needs to be done, Peter. We put forth a, a, a comprehensive immigration uh, uh, legislation, and Congress, uh, Republicans in Congress, can refuse to act. And so the president uh -huh. has used the tools that he has in front of him uh, to uh, to prepare ahead of uh, Title 42 lifting. As you know, that is happening. Uh, in, in the that is weak sauce. That is yeah, bad that is. news. That that's the best thing that they can figure to put in the binder, the Trapper Keeper, is not good. Republicans mm -hmm. in Congress refuse to act. I mean, McCarthy's been speaker for five months. This is not good. It's a couple of days. And so we are putting uh, DHS, Department of State, is putting forth Department processes, processes uh, to, deal, uh, to deal with the changes that are going to be ahead of us. And so that is what's important here. And that's what you've been seeing for important. the past several months. You've heard from DHS. You've heard from the State Department on what we're putting in place uh, to deal with to, to deal with the border once Title 42 lifts. Uh, I was told that we should get Michael Leon on. He's following these hordes of people coming in mm -hmm. so, and the, the, these h horrific stories of rape, et cetera. And oh, crime. yeah, and like El Paso, I believe it is. It's like a huge mess. There's like, oh, yeah. you know, people don't have sponsors or anything. They're just like on the streets. It's, it's like absolute madness down at the border. And like they're saying, it's going to get worse because Title 42, which was this COVID era policy, COVID era, I can't talk, COVID era policy is um is expiring running out and like everybody's taking that as an invitation to come into the country because the Biden administration has made it clear to people that they can come into the country because that's been their policy this whole time. Biden ran on it, he talks about it, like they refuse to enforce the border and people know that. So now we have this humanitarian crisis down there which is also once again, like I say all the time, the liberals are so freaking full of compassion that they end up coming up with the least compassionate, worst, most cruel solutions to everything. Like, this is not a compassionate solution for the migrants either, right? This is not a compassionate solution. Just like their, you know, their college admission policies. Oh, we're so compassionate. We're not going to have the SATs anymore. Okay, well, like, who's that going to advantage? It's going to advantage the most privileged, undeserving yeah. people. Just it, all of their policies do the opposite of the intended effect because they're just led by, like, feelings and f warm fuzzies. And we can't keep people out. That would be mean. But you have the part where she calls him dramatic. Oh, is that here? It's one of those cuts, I think. One of the juicy cuts. Hold on, hold on. Um, but anyway, yeah, so he called her out about the 90% thing specifically because she said migration was down 90% and she uh, yelled at him while she was looking for her answer and her binder that they prepared for her um, where she told him, let me help find Well, that. yeah, I don't see any more juicy cuts other than this one. Um, so... Anyway, yeah, they, like, had a bit of a fight today. Um, here we go. Well, I mean, I'm it, sending it to you. At this point, she is so... She's so useless. Her answers are bad. Like, then they have to come up with ways here. I just sent you. Got it. Now. Um, it's... She... While well, she's looking for the answers, she has nothing to do but yell at him for, like, daring to ask her questions. You said yesterday that when it comes to illegal migration, you've seen it come down by more than 90 percent. Where did that number come from? It was, because I was CBP speaking. is telling us the number is I hear you. I'm about to answer. 136,000 people. She's I'm about to answer fiscal you. Year so if, far. you, if, you if the dramatics could come down just a little wow. bit. Wow. Uh, <laughs> if the dramatics could come down a little What's bit. What's dramatic? about asking a question about okay i'm i'm going to answer so i was speaking to the parolee program as oh, you know sucks. the president put in place a parolee program to deal with uh, to deal with certain countries uh, on on ways that we can limit illegal migration and we have seen the data has shown us that it has gone down by more than 90% that was what i was speaking and to, to no i'm really we're, we're going to go we're going to move go ahead go ahead go ahead Said yesterday that when wow. it comes to illegal migration, yeah, we're moving on. We're moving on. I'm not talking down anymore. Ninety percent. How are they going to continue this? Was, I was speaking with, with, with her. I hear you. I'm about to behaving answer. like this towards the press at this point. Like, has she? How long has she been there now? She must have been there a year now, right? When? Yes, she's been there more than a year. Oh, can we please? Like, can she be done? Because I can't. 
Has it been long enough that they can say they didn't fire the historic first? Right. Put her on the because campaign or something. Give her a, a junior position in the campaign. Yeah, do something. Or let her go be hired by people like Jen Psaki. You know, be a historic first over at MSNBC. The intellectual standards are not very high there. Joy Reid put out this seven-minute video. Did you see this? I sent yeah, this to yeah. you. Yeah, um, yeah. I wouldn't probably listen to all of it because it's extremely dumb and you'll feel uh, yeah, yourself saw... getting dumber as you watch it. Well, uh, the, the guy, whoever posted it, said it's the most important seven minutes you'll ever spend. I know. I was like, are you, are you on planet Earth? Yeah. But it's all about how, like, America, the Republicans are trying to turn America into this white Christian nationalist country. And we're, like, already in Gilead. And what is they're Gilead? Gonna, it's from, mm. That's from The Handmaid's Tale with the red dresses. The Republican Party at this stage in its development is at war with the rest of us. <laughs> the rest of us. I know. They're at war with women. And women, if you think they're going to stop with just outlawing the abortion pill, you got another thing coming. When they're done getting a national ban on abortion, which is what they're going for, they're coming for your birth control. And when they're done with that, they're going to move on to LGBTQ rights. They're coming for gay marriage. Don't think that you, if you're LGBTQ, but you're rich and affluent and Republican, that you're safe because they're coming for your rights too. They're coming for all non-white immigration. Whoa. Because look, if they can force American women to give birth, who needs immigration? They'll just replenish of course, she's saying this about the party that has a, an Indian American major presidential contender right now. Right. But I, like the whole video goes on like this. She's saying that they want um, everybody to have guns in schools and they want mass shootings in the schools. And like it, it go, it's just insane stuff. And she has a show on MSNBC. Like the people at CNN are dumb, but it's like kind of reality based. Joy Reid is like, first of all, the irony that she's talking about people coming for gay marriage when she's gotten in trouble for having blog posts against gay marriage, like not that long ago that she claims she first she claimed she was hacked. And then she claims she totally forgot about after it was proven that she absolutely was not hacked, that they were her blog posts um, that, you know, that that was a mainstream opinion not that long ago. And I mean, like it could change in the future. Who knows? Like, the, one of the things that we know about social opinions is that they can change in response to the culture, and the culture can change over time. That's If anybody on the left actually studied or looked at any history, they would obviously know that. But anyway, but it, it's just, like, they live in fantasy land. Her and Oberman are at the same point. Oh, yeah. Mentally. No, I, like, yeah. so, yeah. So it, they could totally hire Corrine Jean-Pierre over there. That would work. Like, she's smart enough to hack it at MSNBC. I don't think so. Joy Reid's pretty dumb, and she has a big show on there. Yeah, I don't think so. Can I Can I do? We hit a Connecticut piece of news? Sure. Do you have the pizza cutter? Yeah. Okay. Can uh, Sally do it? Um. I can do it. James, bring it up here on the plate with a pizza cutter, okay? <laughs> okay? This is going to go well. Is this the food podcast or the politics oh, podcast? What's the food podcast called? The food podcast is called the All You Can Eat podcast. It is at all you, the letter you, can eat pod on Twitter. And you can find it by searching All You Can Eat Tom Shattuck on your favorite podcast app. It's really fun. We all talk right. About now, I, I want to tell you about something. Mm -hmm. Th so in, in Connecticut, they have made purchase of a truck. To test air quality through the state. Okay. Kinetic like ranks like the fourth most. Nice. You can fill. Now would be a good time to. Fill. Okay. Uh, well, but you said you were going to present a story. That's the I only know, reason. So it's like now I'm going to have to shift gears to one of my other topics no. in the middle of. You do that. You well, just fill. Just say stuff. About. Well, I don't know anything about your truck. You're telling me about this for the first time, so I can't really opine on the air quality truck. So I'm going to have to switch to something else that I want to talk about. But I have another Connecticut story, which is that Trinity College is hey. ending the vaccine mandate. 
my old uh, alma mater, you know. No, it's Seppel's alma mater. It's Seppel's alma mater. My Seppel girlfriend used to go to Trinity. Mm hmm. Yeah, so they have ended their vaccine mandate. May 1, you no longer have to be up to date with all the new boosters and everything. A relative of mine one so. time, Alice, at Trinity College, mm -hmm. commandeered the hotel um, kitchen overnight, managed to get himself inside it by using a window, and made a deluxe late-night meal for all of us. Oh, is this a relative that I know? I think you know him. I think you know him very well. Hmm. Is he known to make late night meals at our house ever? Possibly very occasionally. <laughs> okay. Just checking. Well, I like that. And then in other educational news, um, there's a great article out from a publication called Edutopia. Mm hmm That's all about cold calling. Which cold, I cold calling. Which I thought yeah. was the sales technique of calling right. people on the phone, but is apparently now what we call teachers calling on students. Oh no. Oh no. And is it bad? And is thing? it good or bad? Uh oh. So I didn't even actually look at the article because the article is like, what the research says is it good? Is it bad? It's like evaluating. Yeah. But just then going through the comments of the education people mm -hmm. about the article, where do you think they land on it? I think they think that cold calling is abusive. And, oh, and, Does and, cold calling work? It might, but at what cost to mm -hmm. the relationship building and the self-confidence of the scholar? It's a no for me. I want them to participate with confidence, even if they might not know the correct answer. In terms of building a sense of safety and community, it's a hard safety. no oh, the for moment me. That's the, the word safety is in, you know the, where this is coming from. <laughs> there are many ways to increase engagement that don't involve catching an anxious child off guard, says Dr. Tracy Edwards. MD? Uh, no, I would say not an MD. Um, hard no for me, unless your community is built reinforced. What kind of no is it? A hard no. Oh, good. They've all been good. hard no's so far, pretty much. Oh, well, this one, Dr. Sharma, PhD, says, no. Instead, if I want a shy or reluctant student to share with the class, I'll have them first discuss with a partner. I'll listen to their ideas, affirm them by saying, that's a great idea. I want you to share that with the class when we discuss. That always works. <laughs> um some people say well anything can be intimidating it gets easier if you ask students not to raise their hands no one no hands up no one feels pointed at <laughs> um no no thanks kids are more stressed out now than ever let's not pile okay. on all right uh but i mean Am I out of my mind? <laughs> like this is like this was the, the is girl. Is calling so, on students not a so perfectly normal thing that happens? Supple in came running home um, in the late nineties from her BU law school class because the professor called on her, and that was dangerous. Uh, that when doing mm -hmm. con law or whatever it was, if you get called on, then. It was all sorts of stress, and it was Isn't that, horrifying. like, totally the culture of law school, though? Yes, is it is. That the professors no, no, put yeah. the students on the spot to make sure it, they've done the reading and understood it, and that's, like, the point? Absolutely, but that's she, what came, you're home, paying the she big came home bucks crying, for. like, and half the kids, like, w w like, were drummed out because they couldn't handle But this is just, you can't be called on to just know something? Nope. In life, you, if, that offends your sense of safety Well, it also sen honey. offends, the problem is, as well, if you know the thing, it's good to be called on. <laughs> If you if you know that you're gonna hit it out of the park, you want to be called on. You're you know you're asking to be called on, but if the school has failed you so badly that there's you don't no, have any answers, right? Then it's just essentially they're just kicking a corpse at that point. <laughs> but well, right, but the problem happened before the calling on. Right, <laughs> and yeah. the problem reflects on the teacher, which is why the teachers don't like that. They want to believe that they've yes. done an awesome and wonderful so job teaching, away... uh, but they have, um, they, you know, the student is just anxious and oppressed by things like cold calling. Right. So, so you're going to take away cold calling, and you're going to take away uh, uh, testing. standardized tests. Right. Yeah. Okay. And even right now, with our daughter's report card, I cannot. I don't know <laughs> if she's an A student or uh, failing. I have no idea because there's no A's. There's no. I think nothing. she's like an E plus. Or M student. Okay. 
I was a <laughs> an F student, and we knew what that meant. There was nothing F. special or magical about it. There's no pixie dust around that. That well, meant now either... they've changed it so many times yeah. too because people keep figuring out what the bad grades are. Right. Oh, <laughs> so, they... <laughs> we have labels you know, when people, I was a kid. People understand what the new F is after a while, and so they have to change up all the letters again just so to no, keep so nobody more is hurt. their toes. Right. Okay. So this thing in Connecticut, okay. I love that story. Uh, please remind me tomorrow to talk about it in Connecticut. Okay. Um, in Connecticut, they have DEEP, which is their d- d- Department of Environmental Outside Protection, people. et cetera, yeah. who's – who is and it's run by a woman named Katie Dykes, which okay. I am. I'm not. I have nothing. I don't no know comment on. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's an it's an earthen berm in, that keeps reservoir water in. Okay, that's what that is. So, um, so, so, so deep has because Connecticut has air problems because there's a lot of highways and it's next to New York City and it's it's whatever. Right. They they've made a purchase. This purchase of this, is this thing is of a Ford truck that looks like it's got a Dr. Seuss inspired trombone on the hood that weighs about six hundred pounds. They've got a Zygomatter and a Zekel Fleek and all these things to test the air quality in Connecticut mm-hmm. on this mobile unit. Now there's already about like sixteen stationary stations around Connecticut to test air quality. It, it, but now they have a mobile one, and I just want you to listen to this. This is taxpayer money spent. It's both a national, federal money and state money to buy this souped up. It looks like the Ghostbusters uh, right. wagon now with this absurd contraption on the roof. Sorry, give me a second here. Master volume is down. Oh, the air doesn't always smell this. The air doesn't always smell this sweet. Connecticut, sometimes called the tailpipe of the nation, shifting into a hot... It's a nice nickname for a state, huh? Who actually calls it? I don't know, but I like that they did. Here we go. (laughs) Listen to this. This is TV writing. Shifting into a... Because there's a car shifting. Higher gear to track air oh, quality across mm-hmm. the state. Hartford, Listen New Haven, closely, uh, uh, perpetually words. rank among um, the top 20 uh, cities this in the country dikes. where it's the hardest to live with asthma. The state has 14 stationary air quality sites across the state, but now with this new vehicle, they'll be able to travel statewide and hit places between the gaps. Now, wait a second. They've already got 14 air quality thingies in the state. None of those needed to be driven around, but now because they're missing gaps, we have to get a new car, this new right. Ford Explorer that's souped up with the, the, the Piccolo machine on top mm-hmm. to do that. Now, why would you have to do that? I don't get why you'd have to do that. I'll give you a hint. It's related to cold calling. It's really the only one of its kind in the nation. It's technologically cutting edge. It's, it's a piece of crap. Jalopy <laughs> is what it is. It's useless. It's a Ford Escort. It's a Ford, it's a Ford uh, Explorer with a thing on it. This mm-hmm. huge air, make you know, meter that's going to test the quality of the air. Now, if they actually got like a storm chasing truck and like made YouTube video, that could actually be like lucrative for the state. Well, this is kind of like... think of. But yeah, but like I could storm see chasing truck, of... but with much more stuff in it. This yeah, is... but I could see it like being a thing if they tried to if, make it into this, but like they're not entertainment chasing storms. content. Yes, they're not doing that, Alice. <laughs> you, you'll find out why this is happening. Places between the gaps. It's really the only one of its kind Wait, in the nation. I think it's I know why. Hold on. Cutting edge. It's a science lab on wheels. The Ford Explorer Hybrid has high precision GPS hybrid. instruments to detect and record 16 different. Why does it need high precision GPS? What's wrong with a normal GPS? <laughs> it has 16 instruments, air pollutants, and can show weather data in real time. We've been waiting for years for something like this. In other words, these people just bought a big piece of crap that mm-hmm. is a total waste of money. It's cutting edge. Mm-hmm. It's cutting edge. 16 different meters. Look at all these 16 meters. And of course, all the people at Deep are like, why? It's 16 meters. That's a lot mm-hmm. of meters. It's, it's a, but, but doesn't my car have GPS? Not high precision GPS. Not like this. Yep. This uh, uh, this vehicle that can bring an usher in a new era of testing hyper locally. The car. 
New era of testing hyper -lo locally. So they've mm -hmm. already got 16 of these in the state. The one that's way over there, you can see it right behind the Dunkin' Donuts. That one's not close enough because that air over there <laughs> might be a little different than the air here. Now right. we can know for sure. And by the way, I assume people probably know this, but Connecticut is not one of the biggest states in the country. Right. It is a small state. Cost $300,000 funded in large part by an EPA grant. Mm -hmm. In large part is an interesting term. <laughs> How large is the large part, I want to know. And also, does the EPA make money? Does EPA have money? Uh, from taxpayers. Correct. So this is local. <laughs> you still paid for it. Right. One way or the other. It's like when towns tell you that they did something, they got all this matching federal grant money or matching state money, and like you're supposed to be happy about that. They're like, it's free money. Look at We got matching funds to build this playground. I'm like, but where do you think the matching funds freaking came from? They also came from me, you guys. Like, there's nowhere else to take it from. There's no other people. Like, congratulations, I guess, on taxing us a different way. We've been able to adapt a lot of really sensitive equipment um, to fit inside of a car. The goal, monitoring emissions throughout the state, especially in areas at risk, near power plants, landfills, chemical manufacturing facilities, and in cities near highways. Mm -hmm. This is what they sold them We're on. We're getting there, yeah. This is what they sold them on. This is what all the things you have to monitor. Mm -hmm. But we are getting to the reason. I think I see where we're headed here. Yeah. Yes. I try not to step allow. on it allow a passenger to monitor the air quality as we're as we're driving in real time. It'll be on the road at least once a week and has already responded Wait, to air Wait, why is it only on the road once a week? <laughs> My car goes on the road every day. I don't know. <laughs> I, <laughs> why <assume> once <laughs> a week? The thing costs $350,000. Let's use it more than once a week. It can zip around. And, <laughs> I don't know. The what air, do you mean once a week? The air quality changes but once a week. Yes. <laughs> okay. Great. Quality complaints in North Canaan and Newington. Going forward, the intent is go. to also use it in a kind of more focused fashion in historically overburdened environmental justice uh -huh. communities. And you stepped on him a little bit. Hold on. Going forward, the intent is to also use it, it in a kind of more focused fashion in historically overburdened environmental justice communities. And we're going to start just in the next month or two here in East Hartford and Hartford. The environmental justice. Right. That's what... That's why this car is around, because somebody in the DEI part of the DEI thing of uh, the the, uh, the federal government right. said, you know what, we there's environmental disparities. There's, yeah, environmental justice. Right. We need because there's inequities, because the air in the cities, populated areas, tends to suck even more. Mm -hmm. It's disproportionately minorities are disproportionately affected, and that's not fair. And we need inclusion here. So let's start subsidizing these Ford Explorers with 16 different meters and, and dilators and whatever things that make different noises and a, a really good GPS system. Mm -hmm. And let's drive it to the hood. At least once a week. Right. Let's drive it to Bridgeport, have it idle for a while, use the <laughs> sensors – to uh, break down what is really happening, which is the smell of marijuana is going to be picked up by the sensors. That is what is happening here. Mm. And uh, and there you go. But that's it. Environmental justice. You know what's going to happen, Alice? This Ford Explorer is going to be, if used once a week, that will last about a month, and that thing's <laughs> going to be a conversation piece in the parking lot of Deep <laughs> as Katie Dykes walks past it, and it's never going to be used Mostly again. Mostly, it's probably going to be sit sitting idling in some parking lot somewhere with Deep employees in it on the clock doing absolutely nothing. Right. Like the rest of the state employees. I exactly. Exactly. <sighs> well, this perfectly takes me to my next topic, which is um, this article – which is the Surgeon General is um, tackling a big problem in our country, Vivek Murthy. Um, what, Vivek Murthy? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, there's a lot of Viveks in the news yeah. right now, I feel. Not a bad like. name. Um, yeah. So, um, Surgeon General lays out framework to tackle loneliness and mend the social fabric of our nation. So, as you might be aware, there is a mental health crisis happening in this country, and apropos of nothing with 
absolutely no underlying cause from the government from? doing anything in particular <laughs> at all that anyone can think of that happened in the last few years. Um, absolutely randomly, there is an epidemic of loneliness in America that's hurting mental health and causing lots of problems and like deaths of despair, believe it or not. So thank goodness for us. We have a surgeon general who is right on this problem and is ready to solve the loneliness epidemic. He released an advisory Tuesday. What is he going to hang with us? Addressing the epidemic of loneliness and isolation affecting the country and laying out a framework for a national strategy to advance social connection. The advisory is part of the Biden administration's broader efforts to address mental health. In recent years, about one in two adults in America reported experiencing loneliness, Murthy says in the advisory. And that was before the COVID-19 pandemic cut off so many of us from friends, loved ones, and support systems. Loneliness is linked to sleep problems, inflammation, immune changes, and older people tied to symptoms such as pain, insomnia, depression, anxiety, and shorter lifespan. In people of all ages, they may be associated with higher risks of heart disease, stroke, diabetes, Addiction, suicidality, self-harm, and dementia. No kidding. Shh. Having no friends, being locked up in your house, and being alone away from family and support systems can have bad health effects. Thank God we have the government. Imagine that. The, the, in, they also asked him about uh, the masking, and he was like, oh, well, that was always evolving. We didn't know what we didn't know when uh -huh. we didn't know it. But, yeah, I mean, now, yeah, we weren't exactly. Social connection is as he essential. And he also distanced himself and says, well, that wasn't that was kind of before I got in here. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, here's a little bit of Randy Weingarten, the president of the Wait, United States. Oh, go ahead. I have more to talk about on this. No, I know. It's the, same, no, it's the same oh, okay. subject. Is what okay. I'm saying is that she worked with health mm -hmm. officials. Right. Well, well, actually, they worked for right. her. Apparently, nobody ever made anybody mask or told anybody no. to close anything. No, nobody did. Nobody it. did. Fauci and if people Randy are in Weingarten. high risk, it's they shouldn't be in school. They should be doing things remotely. Just because Donald Trump wants to take a risk with people who go to bars or beaches, those of us who have spent our life teaching kids are not going to take a risk with kids or with our July members' lives. Remote and hybrid are really the only two ways you can reopen um, schools safely. you got to delay school opening because if you don't have the mask, how are you going to be able to do this? There's what a yeah. piece, huh? Yeah. They all, so, uh, so, but now the government's on it. They've decided that loneliness is a profound health risk. Given the profound consequences, uh, we have an opportunity and an obligation to make some investment, the same investments in addressing social connection that we have made in addressing tobacco use, obesity, and the addiction crisis, Murthy says in his advisory. Of course, the only one of those where there's been any progress is tobacco use. They've made the obesity epidemic and the addiction epidemic worse. Mm -hmm. um, we are called to build a movement to mend the social fabric of our nation. It will take all of us, uh, blah, blah, blah. So they're going to root this framework in six pillars. The first, they're going to strengthen the social infrastructure and communities by boosting volunteer organizations and religious groups, public transit and what? education. Who's doing this? What this libraries? And Surgeon General's doing libraries this. Libraries and green libraries and green spaces. Um, the second pillar calls for more pro-connection public policies. Governments and institutions are urged to adopt an approach that recognizes policies that can benefit or hinder connection and that every sector of society is relevant to social connection and policymakers should focus on reducing disparities in connection. There we go. There we go. The third pillar relies on the crucial... I love how all these people, the architects <laughs> right. of the destruction of the emotional well-being of this country mm -hmm. are now coming up with these action items. Totally... You mean pillars. Pillars, yes. The third pillar relies on the crucial role of public health and health care. Oh, in other words, you need us. Keep us. Yeah. He calls for increased investment in educating health care providers. That's for anyone. The physical and mental benefits of social connection. The fourth pillar is that they want to reform digital environments. Uh, oh, my God. Somebody should loudly fire every <laughs> one of these MFs. Absolutely. They want data transparency from tech firms. Uh, the fifth pillar Deepening knowledge urges stakeholders, uh, oh, okay. such as I can't, I can't. officials, stakeholders. policy makers, and health care providers. Do they mention kiddos at all in this? Um, and the final pillar urges a culture of connection in which Americans cultivate the values of kindness, respect, service, and commitment to one another. 
Every one of us can use their voice to emphasize these values and model healthy connections, Murthy says. And the nation's institutions okay, he needs should to be invest incarcerated. in demonstrating them. So, yeah. So, basically, by using these uh, pillars, you know, that that we can, um, including the advisory notes when they're going to build libraries and um, public transit, because that's going to deepen connections. The, uh, the advisory notes equitable access to social infrastructure okay, for all I'll, groups, okay. including those most at risk where social soon. disconnection is foundational to building a connected national and global community. Thank goodness we have them. But, like, isn't that the story of government in a nutshell is, like, break something, like, everybody's mind and then claim that the solution to fix it is the preferred policy you wanted anyway you know what we need is more money for drag queen story hour at the library and you know what free buses which coincidentally is what i've always wanted but it's not because of that it's just because no, we're having a, right. a totally random epidemic of loneliness has seems to have happened to that's America. right um <laughs> what is it clean streets what's that called uh, safe st is it safe streets? Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking like about. Yeah, but it's where they uh, do like sidewalk bump outs and bike lanes right, to right. make sure that's that another you thing can't drive at a normal speed. Where on they any always street. roll it into a current event. Oh, it's because there's oh, com a is it complete streets? Yeah, is or something like that. Something like it's, that. Yeah. yeah, definitely along those. By the way, lines. we forgot to play this uh, Tucker uh, thing. This homage to Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> Fuck it, we'll do it live. Or did I play that? <laughs> I, th I thought we did play it. Yeah, Do you it was part of the other cut too. Oh, was it okay? But uh, um, uh, I think we got to get to the hot sauce. Oh man, I have more to talk about. I want to talk about Bud Light. I want to, but I think you're right. We might have. Oh, to we got to get to that Bud Light tomorrow. thing. We got to do that Bud Light okay, thing. That's too. So the Bud Light. Um, this is too beautiful. Um. Yeah. So Bud Light is actually like in bad trouble. Um. Is this the story that I had? So the um. The one that I was looking at was in, I think, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Bud Light sales continue to plummet after controversy. Sales of Bud Light have been plunging since the company enlisted the help of transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney in a marketing campaign a month ago. In the week that ended April 22, the brand's in-store sales plummeted more than 26%, according to figures reported by Bump Williams Consulting, a firm that is specializes in the alcoholic beverage industry. Looks like, the week those, before looks like sales, those frat boys went somewhere else. The week before, sales were down 21%. The week before that, it was 11%. It is still the best-selling beer in America by far, followed by Modelo Especial and Michelob Ultra. Uh, but if the company can't stop the decline, it's in serious trouble, and it may lose the number one position to Modelo by the end of the year. Go. So um, they're having problems. Obviously, we've talked about this a whole bunch, and the, um, you know, the company has said that um her big miss was i don't think she understood who the core bud light shopper was and when you don't she, think when she came out with her con yes and why don't why is that for anything? okay well we're almost done here uh so this is the consultant guy says that uh he she didn't understand who the bud light no, who the bud light company's core customer no, was no, yeah We're going to talk about the hot sauce. And it is actual night, pretty much. So now they've created this commercial full of good-looking chicks and real manly men. But In cowboy hats and yes, stuff. Yes, Bud Light is now straight again. And here's a little bit of that. Uh, of that. Chicks in the rain running around. Good looking of course, guys. they're playing Chicken Fried by Zach Brown Band. They're, they know they don't care that it's pouring. These group of young, straight, virile people, men and women, are drinking. Music. Yep. They're drinking in the rain. Damn right. Yeah, so that's where they are. I mean, this is kind of incredible, and a lot of people are talking about this because conservative boycotts never seem to really work. Yeah. Um, because pop culture is so driven by lefties, and they're mm -hmm. and lefties are such big consumers of popular and exciting stuff that you know conservatives don't tend to have a huge impact but bud light is like one company that's really vulnerable to this because you know their core customer it does tend to be more conservative so you know their sales aren't down 95 percent; they're down like 26 percent. but at a big company for a big brand for the number one beer 
brand in the country to be down 26% in sales, that's a really big deal for them. That represents millions and millions of dollars. It represents financial pain for the distributors. Like, it sucks that all these people are getting hurt. But so the discussion that I have seen is basically like, what should conservatives be looking for Anheuser-Busch to do now? Like, what, mm -hmm. what are the terms of surrender here? Because they're obviously hurting. They're obviously trying really hard to win back their customers. There's been no apology. Yeah. There needs to be an apology for insulting their customers, for hiring somebody who's insulting to their customers, and insulting to women in particular, and and saying, sorry, we'll do better in the future at understanding our customers' values. That's what has to happen. And I think until there's an actual apology for doing what they did and handling it the way that they did at the beginning, I don't think there's a way out for them. You can make all the country music video inspired ads that you want, but you know, th this isn't going away we until gotta get going here. they actually until they actually apologize. But it's incredible that um, you know, the the right is even in this position to be negotiating with Bud Light how they would. I mean, they haven't tweeted since remember we we'll, talked we'll about this tomorrow. We got to get to the chat chat. There's okay, a lot Okay, okay, okay. But th they haven't tweeted since whatever that was, two, three weeks ago when they tweeted TGIF. <laughs> <laughs> they have, the reaction to that was so harsh that they just, the Bud Light Twitter handle has not tweeted since then. They're sc too scared to. So, okay. So, anyway, the, we will get to the chat chat, which is brought to us by Chelsea Fire Wicked Hot Sauce on the Chelsea Fire Wicked Hot line. Chelsea Fire Wicked Hot Sauce is a delicious, hot, flavorful sauce. It is flavored with ghosts and hemp yes, peppers. Yes, thank you. It it's It is wonderful. delicious. Find it at MarketBaskyPigWhyChelseaFireHotSauce.com. So Fall in Firefighters Foundation. There we go. <laughs> you know, Tom, like, back in the day, like, I was really, like, involved with a lot of music and stuff. And, uh... I was in a couple of bands and stuff, but they never really got really big. Same but, with Tom. Um, we had a, a topic about uh, talking about, you know, making music and stuff. It was like yeah. a couple of days ago. And I thought to myself, bring it up. And actually, today on the Burn Barrel, they were like, um, you, you and uh, Alice were talking about uh, some of the grunge music from the 90s. Yep. That kind of set me off a little bit. And to my thought about the whole thing. And I think it was something that should have happened. Even the Smashing Pumpkins is just a stupid example. But all the other bands like Nirvana and Soundgarden and yep. Alice mm -hmm. in Chains and um, all that stuff. And all that music was just trying to get me out of my DJ years where I was just playing music for school dances and stuff. Because the DJ and did stuff with DJing. Right. But instead of just, you know... Yeah. I just dropped my shrimp thought. I yeah, I understand. I do it all the time. Believe me. Yeah, no, it, th that was. An, I have mixed feelings on that. We should spend more time at some point talking about the, the grunge music and the music of the '90s and, and what that did to people. I sense another podcast coming. I don't need to be on that one. Okay. Hey Tom. Hey Alice. Hey. I don't know what your problem is with people who wear sunglasses. Yeah. I think you should really be upset with the grown men who wear sleeveless sweater vests or have man buns, ponytails, or wear baseball caps. Yeah. Why don't we tackle that issue? I think hey guys, have a good one. against most of those, too. I am against most of those. I don't I, – I, but baseball caps I, I, inside bothers me when they wear them inside restaurants, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But what were the other ones? Sleeveless sweater vests. Um, uh -huh. yeah, I'm not a fan of those. But those aren't widespread. And what's the other one? I forgot what the last one was. I'm sorry. My stuff is being attacked. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. Sweater vests or have man buns, ponytails. Well, the man bun thing, obviously. Yeah. Obviously, you should be incarcerated if you have a man bun. Hi. Steve from Merriman. Hi, Steve. Steve. I've been out of town for work, so I'm catching up on uh, uh, my episodes of The Burn Barrel. <laughs> oh, God. And uh, really, uh, the episode two days ago really – Thanks, kind of set thanks, me off. Thanks. It seems with Tom that as the pounds have uh, depleted, <laughs> the intolerance has skyrocketed. <laughs> He's always and been intolerant. It seems like Tom is hating everything and everyone around him. <laughs> Case True. in point, Tom thinks that if I'm on my boat 
and I'm wearing sunglasses, <laughs> I'm an asshole? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Listen, buddy, I got to tell you, if every person you interact with during the course of your day and every situation you're in is filled with assholes, you're the asshole, okay? You are the gigantic Merrimack Valley-sized asshole. Uh, thank you. I, I don't think that's true. I Incorrect. Incorrect. In the chat, hey, Tom, Cigar Alice, and it's... Bourbon says, uh, I was upset when he went off on Cigars and Bourbon the other night. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's on brand for conservatives, too, to like Cigars and Bourbon. I don't, I don't A lot of good people like Cigars and Bourbon. I know bourbon. they do, Ellis. Those people aren't – I'm not saying they should be incarcerated, but there's a bit – there's something a little bit. You're for, just silently. Well, judging I'll say them. this about you people smoking cigars, and I understand. Who's you people? <laughs> cigar smokers is that you know that it's not enjoyable, and we're just playing along here, so it's fine. You you, you just know it's not fun. I, mm -hmm. I mean, you don't inhale the thing into your lungs, and that's where the fun is, and that's where like I smoked, Alice, you smoked, in smoking cigarettes is fun. Just smoke cigarettes. That's my <laughs> recommendation as a medical doctor. Hey, Tom, <laughs> Alice, it's Paul in Florida. How hey, are Paul? you? Hey, Paul. Hi, Paul. A couple of things. Alice, nothing makes me laugh harder or louder out loud than when you imitate or mimic the wokeism voices from Facebook, newspaper articles, articles, etc. Man, I just love that. I'm not sure what it is, but it brings me into hysterics. Uh, Tom, <laughs> you want to see how accepting people are in Raleigh? Go to that public library event wearing a pair of flip-flops, a red thong, and a white skin-tight t-shirt. A la Chris Farley. How and sure, that, why, why that particular actor? Alice, why do you think? Um, because he's very funny like you. Oh, well, thank you, Alice. Really, the banking crisis is over. Joe Biden told us it was over. Yep. It was only mm -hmm. a couple of banks that just had moderate problems. That's right. Hey, have yeah. a great day. Love your show. Thanks, Paul. Take Thanks, care. Paul. Hi, Mr. Shattuck. Uh, this is Cyril's kindergarten teacher. Uh, I'm going to need for you to come down here. Mom! Mom! <laughs> Wipe my butt! Uh, yeah, so if you can get down here immediately, we appreciate it. <laughs> you got to nip that in the bud, Alice. <laughs> That's great, Jay. Thank he you. He told me he knows how. He just likes me, too. <laughs> okay, he's not going to be a mass murderer or anything. <laughs> Hey, Tom and Alice. I was uh, thinking about going and um, doing a uh, alternative show, like an alternative universe show, <laughs> like an after show of um, the uh, the Burn Barrel, and it'll be called um, Bottom of the Barrel. Maybe I mentioned this, Ooh, but I'm yeah, just, I love you know, it. trying love to figure it. out what kind of medium to use for this show, and um, it's going to be like down in the dirt kind of type of show i love it like stuff uh y your show doesn't talk about and <laughs> obviously i'll be swearing obviously drinking will be happening slurring of the words and whatnot Tom will probably like yeah. it. we're uh we're gonna be a cash show a casual show love it i love it i'm all for it i would definitely listen to it i can tell you that will you uh, make a guest appearance Yes, I will, of course. Okay. Hey, Tom and Alice. Just finished listening to Sunday's podcast, and I realized the one thing your house needs is another child. This is not enough chaos <laughs> I know. there for you yet. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. A lot of people I have five kids myself. This. Hey, he's got five, too. Mm -hmm. But, Tom, by the time I was your age, my youngest was 14. Yeah. So I just want to say, <laughs> hey, good luck coaching Little League with your walker and your oxygen <laughs> tank. I know. God bless you, my son. You're going to need it. Well, hopefully I'll get struck by lightning in the next uh, five years. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five kids, yes. I did. This was not – this is Alice. This was a hit job by no, Alice. I not, thought that I was kid-free and I was moving my life along, and she dragged me back in. Awaken Money Idiot has taken responsibility, is, by no, the way. This They've was taken full sabotage from Alice Shattuck. They said they boosted my fertility. Sabotage. Mm. Hey, Tom and Alice, Steve hey. from Gloucester. Hi, if it Steve. was a Twilight Zone episode and the only two candidates that were running for president were Kamala Harris or Marjorie Taylor Greene, who would you vote for and why? Ooh, 
Uh, and Marjorie Taylor Marjorie Green. Marjorie Taylor Green. I mean, it, if it's a choice between two crazy people, you have to pick your team's crazy person, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a t- politics is a team sport. At the end of the day, there's like only really two governing philosophies. This is what I don't get when people are like, "Oh, I just vote for the person." Like, I don't care what party somebody is. It's just like what ideas they have, and I listen to that. Like, I pick the individual. Yeah. I don't like. There's there's only like two sides. So right. you're and, on one of them. I don't get it. Like, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, she'd certainly shock people, and she'd bother the people who need to be bothered. She's also gone kind of establishment. She was all like well, with the committee. McCarthy. She's a committee assignment, Yeah, right? she was all with the McCarthy speakership stuff. Yeah. Um, well, he had you to. Know, that it's, was... It was a, he's actually rocking and rolling now. Did so you see she's, like, she's going to turn out to be like a totally conventional Republican within the next few years. Very possibly. Did you see his interaction with the Russian reporter? Um, I saw it, but I didn't like watch it. Yeah, McCarthy it is there. becoming king dingling. This is a guy we thought he was an absolute useless oaf for quite a while. Mm-hmm. He's in Israel, and he answered a reporter's questions, and it was a Russian reporter's questions. Patakovsky, Ria Novosti, Russia. Uh, we know that uh, you don't support uh, the current unlimited and uh, uncontrolled. Uh, supplies of weaponry and aid to Ukraine. So can you comment, is it possible if in the near future uh, the U.S. policy regarding sending weaponry to Ukraine will change? Okay, I'm not sure. The, the, the sound here is not good. Did he say, I don't support aid to Ukraine? No, I vote for aid for Ukraine. I support aid for Ukraine. I do not support what your country has done you to, to Ukraine. I do not support your killing of the children either. And I think for one standpoint, you should pull out. And I don't think it's right. And we will continue to support because the rest of the world sees it just as it is. That's a yeah. pistol whipping of a reporter who he he made the stand in for Putin, but that is that is good messaging if you don't want to give a a one iota of hope to Putin and the Russians. Knowing that the guy with the money, who's McCarthy, who's mm-hmm. is going to fund the war, that is uh, Congress it, purse strings, yeah. all that stuff. By the way, speaking of purse strings, Janet Yellen says we're going to run out of money by June 1st I if heard. they don't raise the debt ceiling. I heard. So that's good. And in other news, Fritz in the live chat says he can make this light above me spin. No, really? That's what he said. Very cool. Hi, Steve from Merrimack. Hi, Steve. Steve. Yes, once again, Tom Shattuck showing off his skills as the musical savant of the Burn Barrel. <laughs> Uh-oh. You've never heard of the band Interpol? No. They've been around for like 25 years. Have you heard of them? No. No, I haven't heard of Interpol. Interpol, what do they play? Uh, I really am fascinated by that. I'm at least, I'm almost five years older than you are, Tom. And I've heard of the band. They were pretty popular uh, back when, uh, if I'm correct, you were, uh, you know, leaving sexual conquests all over Boston, <laughs> in and out of uh, every bar and bucket of blood in town, and uh, you never, ever heard a song by Interpol? I find that fascinating. I don't but anyway, so. uh, my advice to Justin would be uh, go to the Pumpkins and Interpol show, but uh, leave when Interpol comes off the stage, because the Smashing Pumpkins are awful, and Billy Corgan is psychotic. Yeah. Not He's a, a lunatic. Thank not, you. Not in a good way. No, I have not heard of Interpol. Um, that is ridiculous. Interpol. Let me, Let me put it on. Let me see what it is. Hold on. That's Collective Soul. I know. Jay's song. Interpol. What are they saying? Interpol. Is it spelled like Interpol? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm seeing Obstacle 1, Evil, If You Really Love Nothing, Come Here, Slow Hands. Interpol. All the rage back on. I don't know. The other side of make believe. I don't know. This seems like when they're old. Um, Yeah. Obstacle one. Let's try obstacle one. Four years ago though, it can't be. It's very nineties. Oh God. I do like this.
very grunge. Most of their songs, it looks like they're in the early 2000s. Okay. I don't uh, know. I, I it like says they formed in 97. Okay. That was when I was kind of checking out of music. Okay. Firstly, I need to, I think, bookmark Burn Barrel Podcast because whenever I want to leave a message and I Google it on my phone, the first thing that comes up is Burn Barrels for Sale. Right. Yeah. I didn't know there was much of a market for that. But anyway. <laughs> I'm calling or leaving a message because, based on yesterday, my prediction is coming even more true. President Pudding Pop getting closer and closer to dropping the N-bomb and revealing what the total racist he is. Is that true? Yesterday saying, hush up, boy, to a no. person of color that was in the audience that's a no. grown man. And then the misogynist saying, where's Ilhan Omar? You're beautiful. I mean, Whoa. talk about degrading. By the way, I do think she's pretty. I do. I hate her politics, her. Yeah. But yep. I do think she's a pretty And woman. that she's unstable. Anywho, it's not about dangerous. me. It's about <laughs> this racist in chief. And sure enough, I'm telling you, by the end of, I'm going to say the summer now, he will have dropped the end bomb. But the media will cover for him. We'll, we'll see. Here we go. They'll just tell us it's his Here. stutter. Hey, Judge, how are you? I don't know why you wanted the job, man. I appoint all those federal judges, but, you know, thank you for serving. I'm not kidding. You want to come and make a speech? Hush up, boy. Whoa. You're Whoa. Did he really is see that? Is that real? I don't even know. No, that's real. But is that a black guy he was telling you? <gasps> I don't know. That's crazy. Whoa. That's crazy. Remember when, who was it? Somebody at the New York Times, I think, hallucinated a congressman calling Obama boy. Oh, really? Do you remember that? It no. Was, the one who yelled during the State of the Union, you oh, lie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She was like, we could almost hear the unsaid word. Oh, God. You lie, boy. Like, but it's always, they, they're always projecting stuff onto the Republicans, actually them. So there you go. That's how it is um thank you all so much for listening a lot of show today we had even more we could have probably gotten to if we'd wanted to um and uh, we will get to that tomorrow when you join us again if you want to be in the live chat and see the live stream you can do that at patreon.com slash burn barrel thank you all so much patreon people the show's for free at burn barrel podcast.com <laughs>